Hello, this is John Fry, and this evening we're going to look at reflective car paint or reflective colored surface and how it interacts with the environment. And what I want to kind of explain is the logic of reflectivity on something that's shiny. And once you understand that, it's a lot easier to re recreate a realistic look of a material without having to resort to uh, looking at uh, photo scrap or a lot of reference. So you can create this out of your head based on the environment that you have. So for this example, I just want to start with a, uh, a sphere. And uh, what I'm doing first is creating a chrome reflection ball. And this is what we're going to interplay with our colored paint. Um, so we have a warm kind of ground tone environment, this desert landscape and the sky, sky tone that's got a lot of travel to it. So it's uh, bluer, um, goes towards a little bit of a purple, uh, towards the zenith reflection, which is the center upper part of the sky and then as we get towards the horizon it gets a little bit greener a little bit more neutral then we're going to create our colored uh, ball and this um, you kind of think of as like a red uh, rubber ball or a colored rubber ball so no reflectivity on it you just have kind of a subtle hot spot where the sun is hitting which should line up with your chrome on top then we're also making a metallic um, version which is a higher contrast so you see a definite uh, more pronounced hot spot on that and actually a little bit of a gold flake in there for a little bit of added kind of um, pop and we can overlay that chrome on top of it uh, with a screen layer and it starts to look kind of shiny but really you know something is a little bit missing to this it doesn't feel quite super reflective so the missing element is Fresnel reflection and this is a little bit more advanced than just overlaying a uh, chrome ball on top. And the principle of Fresnel, the best example I can think of is looking into a lake. Now when I'm standing at the shore and I look down kind of at my feet, I can see fish and rocks in that shallow area. But as I look out to the lake, um, it's almost like my view skips off the surface and I'll see the reflection of a mountain or whatever. But in that same point from my boat looking straight down, I can see kind of deep into the lake. So here's an example. We have a mountain reflecting the lake kind of farther away. And then kind of over towards my feet, I can actually see underneath, I can see the uh, twigs and logs and stuff. And it goes kind of both ways. So the farther out I go, the more reflective it is. And towards me, it's more transparent. Um, and this principle applies to things that aren't um, liquid either. So if I have a floor that's uh, wood, um, the farther out it goes, the less um, acute angle I'm looking at it at, and I'll see more of the reflected um, tone. Uh, this picture of a Ferrari here, you can see this angle, it's more perpendicular to my eye. It's a little bit more colorful. And then as its surface rolls off, I see more reflection of sky tone. Now this hood is reflecting like 100% sky straight up. So if it was 100% reflective, it'd be really even across. So the only difference you're seeing in value is the Fresnel effect. So as this side of the car goes around and kind of curves away from us, we're seeing almost that same color of the bush, that green color reflected in the car. In fact, the circled area, if I kind of look at it by itself, it's really hard to tell what color the car even is. So basically we're seeing kind of the lake reflection far away and then up close we're seeing through the lake or through the clear coat or through the reflectivity of the car into the paint color. So what does that mean um, for our ball that we have here? If we look at our Fresnel layer, we really want to keep that outside area where we're skipping off the, the reflection um, of the lake or the transparent surface. And then underneath we can see a reflective pass. So if we look at our color and then we turn our um, main reflection on, you'll see that kind of transition between transparent reflectivity to 100% uh, mirror reflectivity in the Fresnel area. And uh, we can kind of make that gradual, tune it a little bit, and you see a difference with the uh, metallic uh, ball under there as well. So the next thing we're missing is the hot spots where the sun is reflecting. So I'm going to do that on a different layer on top of everything else. And uh, that should line up with the uh, metallic uh, ball we already had. The sun will be in the same place right there.
and I just have a little bit of light scattering around there. So that little bit of dazzle in the sun, we don't see the sun as a very focused ball, of course. Um, all sorts of optic effects, atmosphere, etc. And there's kind of a haze around it. And then when it reflects on the uh, surface of automotive paint, sometimes you see uh, swirl marks. If this thing's been run through too many car washes, uh, you can just blatz a little uh, airbrush on there. And so when it's all layered, you get this kind of look. And uh, hopefully when you squint your eyes, it does look a lot more like a sphere than we started out with. Um, and because we have uh, all these layers, we can um, modify, adjust them independently. Um, you can adjust the brightness and contrast, get a little bit of a punchier effect. And what we call that area towards the sky where it turns from red to blue up there, um, that is what at Art Center we call like a core area. And uh, we would do that with like uh, chalk or whatever. And, um, you know, it really shows a lot of movement in the surface. So uh, those surfaces really look like they have volume. So I can go into my main paint layer and, you know, change the hue and the saturation, um, change it, uh, you know, to a purple effect. So you really see a nice uh, kind of a flop in the core area from purple to that sky tone. Um, adjust the brightness and the contrast, that sort of thing. So, you know, this is a really simple ball surface, um, but you can add complexity in the shape. Um, likewise, we can change the environment that the ball is reflecting. So in this case, it's a uh, like a reflection of a, um, an alley or a street scene. So we have kind of this um, canyon of buildings surrounding us and a little bit different sky tone. Um, sun's in a little bit different place in this one, a little bit more central. And I'm just kind of going through the same process. This is just sped up from what we had before. I recommend starting with the sphere tutorial uh, before you get into complex shapes. But then um, I would take a whole kind of line drawing for a car and see if you can execute the same thing. Just think about the direction that the uh, surface is facing relative to your eye and reference your ball for what color that would be. And then when you're uh, driving around the city or the area that you're in, you start to pay attention to automotive paint, uh, depending if it's at noon or at dusk or dawn you'll really notice a lot of different effects happening. 